So hello everyone. I'm Kensei Nakada from Tetrate, and here's the session A Tale of Two Plugins, safely extending the Kubernetes schedule with WebAssembly. So today we're gonna discuss about uh, how we make the Wasm extension on Kubernetes schedule and you know how it started, how it's designed, and the challenges we faced or we are facing. And we will continue, we will um, compare the Wasm extension with other existing extensibilities. Uh, that we are already having, and yeah, see some pros and cons, and try to help you understand the, um, you know, how this kind of uh, Wasm extension works, and looks like. Yep. So let's get it started. So I'm Kensei Nakada from Japan. So this is my first time visiting Backbone, and I'm working for Tetrate, building the service mesh solution for customers. And I've been, I've been contributing to Kubernetes around almost four years, three years now. And I usually focus on SQL scheduling as an approver and has led many major features development. So, all right, so that's pretty much about me. So in this talk, first I'll go through the basics from the, uh, basics of uh, combined schedule, and then we'll be you know sifting into the main topic. So let's start from it. Wait. All right. So combined schedule is one of the control plane components. So it's responsible to find the best node for each you know unschedulable pod and. It considers a lot of uh, factors like resource, work, port affinity, node affinity, image locality, etc. And each of those uh, factors is implemented as a scheduler plugin. So, for example, like uh, we have resource fit plugin that is responsible to um, determine uh, the node based on the resource capacity. So the schedule is basically composed of this kind of many plugins. And those plugins and the interfaces are actually based on the architecture called scheduling framework. So it's the fundamental architecture in the uh, command schedule, and it's like a pluggable and uh, extensible. So it defines multiple extension points that you know a plugin can do something based on the extension point. And at future extension point, plugins future at some nodes, and at, at school extension point, plugins scores nodes. So let's see how it works briefly. So the overall scheduling flow will be like, uh, let's say we have four nodes, and we have two plugins each for future and school extension point. And if you, oh wait. So future happens at first, and some nodes are rejected because of, you know, for example, maybe lack of resources or lack of um, available port, uh, doesn't match any node affinity that pod has, etc. And so in this example, uh, only node one and node two go through the, you know, all the filters registered here. And after that, uh, scoring happenings. Yeah. And node one and node two are you know scored by each score plugin, and the node may you know get the high score when it has an image in its cache, or when it's you know uh, for example matches the soft node affinity of the pod. So there are many factors of scoring as well. So eventually we get the total score. Right? Uh, so in this case node two is picked up for this part. So this is the overall, overall flow of scheduling in the command scheduler. And I just show you uh, just two extension points, but the scheduler actually has a lot more extension points. And each of them has specific responsibility, like we saw with you know, filter and score. So those many extension points and uh, make the framework you know, flexible to support many wider scheduling use cases in the world. All right, so we've quickly gone through the basics of the Kubernetes scheduler, and let's dive into the main, to main topic from it. 
So extensibility is really important for the scheduler because, as you know, Kubernetes is used for various use cases, and it's impossible for us, I mean, for maintainers, to implement all the features for every users, right? Uh, so, but on the other hand, uh, Kubernetes scheduler has been matured uh, for a very long time with, you know, tons of various contributions. So it's also difficult for users to build their you know, own scheduler from scratch for their use case. So we started the extensibility work in the scheduler so that we can, I mean, maintainers can focus on maintaining the core framework and the core you know, Kubernetes built-in scheduling features. And users can just use our extensibility to build uh, you know, things. Specific, specific for their own use cases, but without inventing the scheduler from scratch. All right, so currently we have two extensibilities in the scheduler, and one is Webhook, it's also called X, Extender, and another one is Golang plugin. So let's see each of them. The first one is Webhook, uh, this feature is called Extender, and it's our like, first attempt uh, to provide the extensibility from the scheduler. So when we started this, we didn't even have the Kubernetes, no, uh, the scheduling framework. Uh, so there are four points that users can you know, inject their own logic via Webhook, and each at each point, the registered webhook is called, and users can you know, control the scheduling decision based on the response from the webhooks. So this extension allows users to implement the you know, specific um, uh, scheduling logic in uh, webhook, and, but without implementing the scheduler from scratch, right? Um, so the other advantage of this extensibility, this webhook uh, based extens extensibility is the ease of its use. Uh, users can just insert the logic just by you know, registering the webhook URLs, and they don't even need to rebuild the schedule. It's just the configuration stuff. And th they can you know, select the, like, any programming languages that they prefer to implement the webhooks. So this is flexible for users. but it has a certain downsides as well. So uh, the overhead and the lack of functionalities. So especially the latter is critical because uh, as I said, it has four points. It has only four points and that the users can register webhooks. So it's not enough. As we see, the framework has a lot, of, a lot more of extension points, but it only has four. But we can't just increase the number of web points because of the overhead. Because frequent API call between the scheduler and the web hooks uh, would slow down the scheduler too much. So we started the scheduling framework that described already. Um, so actually, the scheduling framework is motivated from the uh, web hook extensibility. So we've implemented several more extension points that uh, they can cover most of um, scheduling use cases in the world. And also we moved all our scheduling features, I mean, built-in features into each plugin. So the framework allows users outside, of, uh, outside the upstream to integrate their own you know, scheduling logic, uh, scheduling plugins in order to satisfy the use cases without concerning the complex scheduling core implementation. So like we saw in a previous slide, uh, the framework uh, provides a lot of extension points, right? And on the contrary, uh, many functions are exposed from the scheduler to plugins so that they can optionally uh, do something more, uh, like directly asking something in, uh, to, the, to the scheduler side. So as a result, uh, the scheduling framework nowadays, scheduling framework or Golang plugins nowadays satisfy wider use cases in the world. 
And each function call is, you know, just a Golang function call. It's not that, you know, there's no such overhead, right? Um, but it has, it also has a downside of troublesomeness. Uh, it doesn't support the dynamic loading of the plugins. So you, when you want to use it, uh, you have to, you know, fork the scheduler, integrate your plugin into the scheduler, then you have to rebuild it and replace the existing scheduler with, a new, with your new one. So that's kind of troublesome to build up. All right, so to make more uh, user-friendly extensibility, we started some, um, we started to, you know, explore the WASM extension here. Yep. So WebAssembly is a way to safely run code compiled in other languages. So WASM runtime executes WASM guest, and WASM guest imports the functions from host. So they cannot do other, other stuff. So some of you may think, you know, WebAssembly is a broader stuff, or in the cloud native stack, then there's, uh, you know, run WASG stuff currently. But another use case of WASM here is using it to provide um, extensibility. Uh, so for example, Envoy already has a capability of WASM extension. And the idea is that the user implement their core logic, core, yeah, scheduling logic, uh, and compile it in WASM binary, right? And the core component here, the scheduler, embed the WASM runtime and load this WASM guest that user created and runs it. All right, so with WASM extension, so all the, you know, functionalities of uh, scheduling framework are, I mean, will be available. So it's as extensible as uh, Golang plugins. And also it's less troublesome to set up because it doesn't require any rebuild or, re uh, rebuild or replacement of the scheduler. Uh, users can just, you know, distribute the uh, WASM module via URL or something, then use, uh, the command scheduler can load it from there. But, and, uh, and uh, we also have um, TinyGo SDK, uh, but technically users can uh, implement their uh, WASM binary uh, compiled from uh, any languages so that they can deal uh, some flexibility of uh, language, cho language choice as well. But the downside here is that uh, you, if you compare WASM and Golang plugin, I mean, scheduling framework extensibility, was module still have an overhead, of course. Also, the overhead is much smaller than the webhook. Um, also, WASM has uh, some sandbox peculiar limitations, and maybe some of you may not familiar with it. So here is the... Oh. So here is the some um, you know benchmark result. So this is just a default scheduler. No extension is inserted. And this is uh, so wasm extension at uh, the scheduler with a wasm ex extension. So you can see a small overhead in the uh, from this one. And whoop, right. So this is webhook based one. So you see. Um, it's obviously slower than this one and this one, right? All right, so can the WASM extension eventually replace all the, you know, Golang plugins once it's solid? Uh, the answer is, I would say no, because um, as we saw, the WASM extension cannot avoid the overhead. This is critical because uh, generally speaking, if your cluster is super big, then your scheduler needs to be faster enough to handle all pods created. So if your cluster gets bigger and bigger, and you know, at some point, the overhead uh, from WASM extension become, maybe become unaccept unacceptable. And if you need to handle maybe tons of various objects in your scheduling, then the overhead would be also bigger. This is another factor that makes 
your WASM extension slower. So you maybe have to you know, pay attention to such overhead as well. So the point is where you can make a compromise, uh, com compromise uh, between the extensibility and the performance. So if your cluster is super big, then maybe you can choose, uh, you, you only have to choose Golang plugin only. That's your, the only option. But your cluster is small enough, then maybe you can choose Plasma extension. And your cluster is super small, then even you can choose the webhook as well. So you have to choose which is the best for you based on your requirement of the cluster. All right, so from here, let's dive into the Wasm extension. I'm wondering how many, how much time I have, all right. So Kumite scheduler is implemented in Golang, and we are using the awesome was zero to embed the Wasm one time here. Um, so we actually implemented this uh, Wasm extension as Golang plugin, and this Golang plugin loads the Wasm module that users created and run them on was zero that I mentioned. So the configuration looks like this. As I said, uh, users can uh, load the Wasm binary from maybe from files or from a remote host. Uh, so it's easy to distribute. And when Wasm Golang plugin receives the function calls from scheduling framework, it forwards, basically just forwards the function calls to Wasm module. So was a module basically, you know, expose the expose the similar function call like future and school, and as you can guess, each of them is just corresponding to the same extension point in the framework. So the interface between the scheduling as between the scheduler side and the was a module side is called ABI, it's application binary interface. And users have to implement their own, you know, Wasm modules based on the APIs that we define. Also, sometimes uh, the Wasm module has to get more data from the scheduler side. So, uh, in such case, the Wasm module can call some functions exposed from the host, exposed from the scheduler in this case, and those host functions. Uh, you know, those host function makes uh, the Wasm module available to do some more extra work. And as I said, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have TinyGo SDK. So I said the guest has to implement the ABIs, but it's gonna be a tough work, right? Uh, Cause, you know, uh, I just said ABIs, but there are uh, tons of functions that has to be implemented. So uh, we provide a SDK to make it easier for people to create WASM modules. And the SDK allows users to develop WASM modules with a very similar experience with Golang plugins. So in Golang plugins, uh, we have actually uh, the scheduling framework. Uh, we have this kind of interface and it's the same, uh, it's not same, but very similar in uh, Wasm extension too. So you just need to implement the interfaces and the ABI will be just implemented uh, background. So the question here is why we selected TinyGo, not Go? Uh, Cause uh, Golang was target, uh, did not uh, support, that, support the some exported functions when we started this project. Uh, but actually the spot is coming. It's already, I mean, merged. So we are planning, actually planning to explore Golang SDK with them as well in the future. So when you craft the extension with Wasm, uh, one big thing surprising you is that Wasm only support numeric types. So we cannot define the function like that. So directory pass pod from 
uh, scheduler to Basmo guest. Uh, this kind of function cannot be you know, defined. Uh, so, uh, and also because of the uh, sandbox, sandbox limitation, the guest cannot access the host's um, memory directory, uh, which means you cannot pass the object by reference to. Uh, so how can we transfer this kind of object between the host and the plugins? So the point is that obviously host can read or write uh, things into uh, the guest memory, right? So we basically just, so the guest asks the scheduler to put pod into this address and the scheduler put it and it returns the length of the pod and the wasm module with it. So this kind of uh, design uh, you can find everywhere in our ABIs. And yeah, this is a very common pattern uh, for how the object transfer works. And, and the next point uh, to discuss is lazy loading and casting. Uh, as we've discussed at first, the performance is one of the you know, important points when crafting this kind of extension in the scheduler. But the object transfer is costly, so we need some you know, tricks for a better performance. Uh, but you know, depending on the scheduler logic, uh, the bottom module may or may not uh, need to get some objects, right? I mean, some uh, bottom module might need, might only need this part, but uh, some other Wasm modules may need more ports or other various objects such as node or PV, PVC, et cetera. So the SDK doesn't know which modules uh, need which objects until running them. Uh, so, but we obviously don't want to pass all the objects because uh, it's gonna be an uh, overhead. Uh, so in order to reduce this kind of unnecessary object transfer, we implemented a lazy loading and caching in the uh, SDK. So looking at this example, uh, so this preschool interface has two objects, right? Uh, pod and node list. And pod is used, but node list isn't. So in this case, uh, when the yellow line, uh, pod spec is called, uh, it actually not just reference the pod spec, but it's actually fetching the pod from the host. So what is happening here is uh, when scheduling framework calls brief score function of um, WASM extension plugin, uh, the plugin calls the pre, pre score function exposed from the exposed from was module, right? And the point is that at this point, the plugin doesn't pass any object to, object to um, WASM side. And it just asks the WASM to start executing a preschool. And in preschool, uh, WASM module, okay, needs uh, the pod object. Uh, then if the pod isn't in the cache yet, uh, the WASM module fetches it from the host side. And, you know, when it returned, uh, it puts this part into a cache so that it doesn't have to fetch it again. So this is how we implemented the, you know, simple lazy loading and how actually the WASM module calculates the uh, scheduling results. And another topic here is garbage correction. So garbage correction is another overhead that we have to consider. Because uh, WASM has only one, uh, WASM has only one thread and uh, the garbage correction is inlined. As a result, the WASM, no, uh, garbage correction overhead was like over half the latency of the plugin execution. So towards this problem, uh, the first thing we tried is 
not tiny GC. The name is great. And so this is awesome. Uh, makes some huge latency reduction in some scenarios. Um, we were actually suggesting using uh, not tiny GC with our SDK, but given the repository is already archived, uh, so we cannot just keep relying on it, right? So we, you know, we started to explore another optimization that we can make. And here is another one, a tiny go, yep, tiny go leaking frog. So if we use this frog, um, the wasm module compiled from uh, tiny go just allocates the memory and never frees it. So meaning the wasm, uh, the memory usage in wasm keep growing. So at some point we have to recreate the module periodically, but um, this looked work, but uh, actually in our case, the recreation of wasm module was costly, so didn't get a good, you know, result, good performance from it. But depending on the architecture of this kind of wasm extension, you may be able to, you know, get some benefit from this strategy. All right, so these are what we try towards uh, garbage collection problem. But obviously, uh, this, uh, these solutions are just, you know, just for tiny goal, right? So, of course, like we implement, if we implement SDK with non-ZC language, then problem will vanish. Or like, yeah, so currently we are using Go because Golang is main language in Kubernetes community, but uh, it'll be awesome to, you know, try out this kind of SDK with non-GC language and see some performance comparison from it. All right, so we also have benchmark, but the time is coming, so I, describe it very shortly. <laughs> so we have two layers of benchmarks. Uh, one is uh, plugin level one, and another one is scheduler level one. So the latter is this one that we actually saw in a previous slide. So we get, um, so we run some certain scenarios and see, observe some metrics from the, uh, from, uh, I mean, during the scenario. So in this uh, picture, uh, we see throughput and, um, what's this, scheduling latency, but there are a bunch of more um, metrics that we can see from it. All right, so wrap up. So today we started from some basic of you know, combine the scheduler, and then um, we've gone through how we can design and implement this kind of wasm extension. So now, like, I hope you understand uh, that wasm is at least worth considering uh, when creating this kind of extensibility from platform, but along with some concerns that we saw. So when you create it, um, you probably want to create some SDKs to abstract, I mean, to make it easier for people to build this kind of uh, wasm guest, hiding the you know, complex function calls under the foot. And the object transfer requires some effort to reduce the overhead. You probably want to follow the similar, like cache and lazy loading. And lastly, you should have a benchmark uh, to you know, keep your performance, always measure it and not introduce some degradations. So regarding our project, uh, we just reached uh, the first release of it. And this project is actually first, uh, um, I mean first project in the official Kubernetes community that is trying to implement the extensibility with Wasm. 
So I'm really looking forward how you know this project can influence other six other um, components that uh, Kubernetes has because you know Kubernetes has a lot of extension knobs right uh, in it not only Kubernetes scheduler so we may or may not be able to uh, find what's useful for other components as well. All right. Thank you very much. So this is the end of my session. Uh, have a great day, everyone.